Oh, hell fire. What are you doing? Yeah, the potential consequences of getting hit up the ass at a stop sign are pretty horrendous. Imagine if there'd have been a car coming right to left or even left to right at that point. I got shunted straight out. Could have been into somebody's path. Curtains. I think it's time we had a look at how we can reduce the risk of these incidents when approaching stop signs and junctions and anywhere where there's a potential for rear end collisions. So here we are, hello. I've brought up a fancy little um, technique here. I'm gonna wow you all with my computer skills, sort of. Now, I've got to create an edit thing here. I'm gonna draw on this little map. This is, in effect, a Google map of a road I travel every day. This is called Wright Street. There it is. It is my nemesis. The road travels on here. I'm going to just flick around here and just change a few things up. So this is the road here. I'm just going to mark the edge of the road to there and across here. Now the issue we've got, if I just bend it down here, we've got a massive roundabout with traffic that comes down here. Look at that arrow there. And it goes round here. Now I travel in this direction on a daily basis, very regularly, and unfortunately I have here a stop sign, as you can see with my arrow, and a stop line. Not a problem, it's not unfortunate to some extent, it's there for a reason. There are better junctions out there that give me a better reason, but this one, you have to adhere to it, and I'll tell you why, because quite often PC Plod sits there on that little white blob, out of sight, waiting for people just to give way and fly straight out without stopping. And then he'll nip out, blues and twos, and start writing his tickets out. As I'm approaching this junction in this direction, we've got cars that can come off here. This is a traffic island here. I've come down this corner here. And I have to stop. The problem we have is, we have to have a situation where if I'm wanting to come around here, I've got to stop. The issue is, at this position here, and I'm going to just do an X in a different colour, or a blob in a different colour, go back to the red. At that point, people have got a view of the road, all the way up here. What they do tend to do, if they're in a car behind you, from that position, is not look at you. They're already looking up the road, looking to see if there's any cars coming. It's fine. The problem we've got that, I mean, that's forward thinking. You've got to think like that as a motorist. But you've also got to be thinking, is the car in front of me going to stop? Because they may not have seen that stop sign at these two little dots here and the, and the solid white line. They're expecting any cars in front, if there's nothing coming, or any bikes, of course, in our situation, just to carry on straight out. Because they've not seen the stop sign, as I said. That's because it's going to open junction and people can see. The issue is, I know Plod sits here. And I want to be legal. I don't want to break the law. I also want to be safe. Two options. If you've got a car sitting right with your chuff and you're not confident that he's going to stop and you've been watching your mirrors because you have since you were right down here and you've been coming along here and you've got cars behind you my argument is, if I think he's going to go up my chuff, I'm not stopping. I'm, if, if I think it's clear here, and it is clear down here, and I've got nothing coming, and he, I think he's going to hit me up the chuff, for my self-preservation, I'm going to give way and carry on. Because I've got an open junction. The issue is, I'll take that risk. Because I, I fell foul of it in that previous clip, as you can see. And I would argue the point. It's not a great junction in this situation. Any open junction where people can see where they're going, they're less likely to do the right thing and stop, follow the, the road rule. How do you counteract it? Well, you can do the backing up. Now, we've all seen the Formula One. We've seen Lewis. We've seen Seb and Max and, and Charles Leclerc. They're all blatting around. What happens is 
there'll be a, an incident on track, there'll be a car breakdown, or there'll be a, there'll be a bingo somewhere, there'll be a bit of a crash, they've got to bring the crane in, lift it out of the way. In that period of time, they'll bring out the safety car, slow all the vehicles down, slow all the racing cars down, until the road's clear. At that point, the leader, Lewis, generally, has the front. Everybody's come up behind him, and it's up to him to control the race at that point. And nobody's allowed to overtake until it's to his advantage. Now that's what I'm talking about here. What he tends to do, or what the leader of the race will tend to do, is back everybody up. And how that, that doesn't mean, if you look up backing up on Google, it gives you reverse and it, there's no specific, I can't find a specific term on Google for backing people up or an example in, the, in, in relation to what I'm trying to explain. What I mean by backing somebody up is, if I go back to my map, is if I'm here and I'm travelling in that direction and I've got cars up my backside and I know through local knowledge and I can see in the distance I've got stop signs that I know I'm going to stop. I want to be slowing them down, making them aware of me making me on my motorbike their focus of attention rather than when they get to this point here they start looking up the road and take their attention off you so I'll start backing up I'm slowing down probably just a little bit more than I would normally need to do I'm trying to slow them down back them up and then at, at some point I can then at that stage I'm creating a bit of a gap in front of me which gives me a little bit of a safety zone up front here so if I'm here and I'm slowing everybody down to maybe, because that's a 50 km an hour zone, 30 mile an hour in the old money. If I find myself in a situation where I've then created a gap in front, I can then exploit that gap by speeding back up again and dropping them and leaving, giving myself that advantage in front like, like Lewis did when he's doing his setting off from after his safety car's pulled into the pits. He can then take off and create that little bit of a gap behind him. And that's what I'm going to try and do. So back in, some, back in a queue of traffic up behind you, and I'm not saying slow down to the stage where you're going to be doing 20 k's an hour or risk getting a rear ender. What I'm doing is just backing off the throttle a little bit and slowing everybody down, creating myself a buffer zone at the front. So I can then exploit that, get up to the stop sign, have a quick look to the right, hit the stop and then go before I've been rear ended. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about is backing traffic up a little bit and that's what you need to be looking at doing. So consider that if you've got, if you're approaching a, an open view junction where there is a stop sign, where there's a risk of other motorists from this point looking up that road and not looking forward there and realising that you've come to a stop. That's what happened to me, to my detriment. But as I say, if you're at risk of going, getting hit up the backside because you've not been able to back anybody up, I'd suggest not actually stopping. It's, the, it's illegal. You'll get a ticket if you get seen, but that's the risk we've got to take as motorcyclists, is not getting hit up the backside. We're, we're vulnerable, I've said it many times. Um, it's more important that you get to your destination. And if you've got an argument, like I would have, I'd get my footage out and say, look, this is what happened to me last time. I had a car on my backside. He wasn't concentrating, or she wasn't concentrating. She kept looking down at her phone. And I wasn't confident she wasn't going to hit up the backside. So I had to give way as opposed to stop. And that is the difference. The problem we've got in South Australia is that each individual vehicle has to come to a complete halt. I think I've been away from the country a long while now. In the UK, if you're second in line, the car in front stopped, you are allowed to give way if it's as a second in line to the vehicle in front, if the road is clear, to basically reduce the risk of getting hit up the backside from the car behind, which is what happened to me, as I said. Difficult one. You've got to concentrate. You've got to be aware of what's on behind you all the time on a motorbike, as we know, what's going on behind you. And you've got to control by backing people up that distance, front and back. And you, as I said, if you back people up by just backing off a little bit as you're approaching junctions, and then controlling that space in front by then jumping forward, you don't necessarily have to go up to above the speed limit, but you can then create a gap behind you before you come to a halt. And then get on your way safely. Interesting scenarios, but keep an eye on them stop signs, keep an eye on giveaways. And that's something, this backing up is something you can use as you're approaching traffic lights. You can do it all the time. And it's a good practice if you're 100 metres away from a traffic light 
and it's a red or it's a, it looks like it's slowing going to change you can start backing off slowing the cars up behind that way you're reducing that chance of a rear render you're, you're increasing the gap in front more than you would rather than screaming straight up to a vehicle in front or straight up to a set of traffic lights and stopping therefore you're not going to get that you're slowing the vehicles down not only are you attracting their attention but you're also becoming their focus of attention and you can use the, the, the stop, the, the slowing signs, which I'll put up on the screen. You can use the stop sign. doesn't matter that the driver in the vehicle behind you understands what your, your arm signals are. You can show your backside if you want. Show your ass. Anything to attract their attention. But you can use the slowing down sign, which I'll put up on the screen. Practice that. And the stop sign. Use it. Just to attract their attention. Let them know that you're doing something out of the ordinary. Because then they'll see you, you've vastly reduced the chance of getting hit up the backside like I did. It's the way forward. And uh, that's my tip here for backing people up as you're approaching stop signs. And after I created that uh, Google Map setup, I then set off to work. And guess what? I had the perfect example to add to the end of the video. And here's the situation. I'm I've got to concentrate here. I've got this white BMW behind me, and this is the exact scenario I was talking about earlier. I've got a U in front. He might want to go straight out. Now I've got the, the guy behind. I'm going to back him up. So this is what I'm talking about now. I'm going to slow him right down. He's caught me up. But I'm going to keep him at that pace because I've got a stop sign. Now this is what I'm talking about, that view, and look at that. I'm going to use my right arm, I'm going to stop him. Because it's a stop sign. He nearly went on my arse, didn't he? And he's wondering why I bloody stopped. And see, he hasn't stopped, so that's the exact problem I've got here, at that junction. That is an illegal manoeuvre that he's done. Whereas I had to... I put my... I used my right arm as opposed to my left to tell him I was stopping. Did I stop him hitting me at the arse? That'd be a great one to have a look at later, won't it? So that's the scenario that I'm talking about. So thanks for watching everybody. If you like what you see, please subscribe, give it some thumbs, give me some comments. Appreciate you visiting and the message is growing, the subscribers are growing. We're getting there. Let's keep it rolling.